All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the final week of Super Swing. Um, this week, our main focus is going to be adding our one and only, uh, I guess, antagonist AI. Um, it's going to be a turret that's going to be stationary, um, and it's going to, uh, you know, just shoot at us from wherever we place them in the world, uh, and then have the chance to deal damage to us and reset our position if we happen to get hit. Um, so what we need to do to start that is create the prefab. Um, we do have a base prefab, but we're going to need to to modify it a little bit before we can actually use it um, for our script. So let's go ahead and go into our prefabs folder, go to gameplay, uh, and you should see this, this prefab called turret model. Let's go ahead and drag that up into our hierarchy here. That's going to put it at 000, which is of course in this wall, um, as most of the stuff that we've added to our scene uh, has been. Um, once we've got it in the scene, let's go ahead and head over to the inspector side. We're going to add a rigid body component. So again, you can search in that search bar for rigid and you should see it pop up there. Um, and we can leave it uh, as it is. We also need to add another component called a mesh collider. Uh, and a mesh collider is just like a box collider or a, uh, a sphere collider or capsule collider like on our player. But what it does, instead of being a, a predefined shape like a cube or a sphere or a capsule, um, it's actually taking the information from our mesh, which is the actual model of the turret itself, and then creates a collider that's the exact same shape as the model. Um, but an important thing to note is that uh, as it's set up right now, it would perfectly match the, mo the the model of the turret. So if you were to like, uh, I don't know, run into it from like, if it was humongous and you could run into it from any angle, you know, you'd be able to run under this claw, you'd be able to go inside these, or you know, between the hole and its body, this type of thing. Um, but when we want to simulate it with physics and have a rigid body component attached to it, uh, we can't actually use our mesh collider in the same way. We need to check this box that says convex. And what you'll see is that when you click that, uh, now suddenly all these lines appear. And the reason for that is a convex collider simply means that we can't have, uh, like the collider can't dip inward. Every line has to, uh, you know, from corner to corner, there has to be a straight line. It can't like run along the inside of this edge. So uh, the shape is more so now kind of rotating around these points of contact on the edges of our turret. And what you'll find with this is that generally speaking, um, it's going to kind of interact in, with the world in the same way that it would if it didn't have the convex collider. There are some situations where the convex collider will cause some different collisions than the non-convex collider would, but in the case of it being simulated by physics, this is fine. Uh, next, what we want to do is create an empty game object on our turret and then immediately pull it out uh, as we've done so many times before. And we're going to just name this one turret and then make our turret model a uh, child of that. Uh, and then once again, we want to create another game object on our turret here, uh, and we're going to call this one Firepoint. This is going to be where our turrets lasers fire from. Um, and then we're going to move this up and to the end of this barrel here. So this turret's got a nice long barrel. Oh uh, yeah, we wanna stick this thing right at the end of that. Um, since once again, that's going to be where our, our uh, turret will fire its shots from. Once we've got all of that set up, we can go ahead and click on the empty parent game object here and drag that down into our gameplay prefabs. Um, once you've got all that done, don't forget to save your scene. And then the next step, we'll actually start scripting uh, the turret's behavior.